Okay, this segment I want to talk about marketing your meth business. You know, as an entrepreneur myself, I understand the vital importance of marketing. Obviously, you can know everything there is to know about uh, how to do your business, but unless you can get the word out, it gets very difficult. I understand this very personally because besides the meth and the home inspection business that I've been running for a number of years, uh, my wife and I have owned a tanning salon and um, I'm beginning the process of, of doing what I do via the internet, uh, which is why I'm sharing this information with you now. Trust me. Um, it, even a matter of months ago or years ago, uh, the information that I am putting in this video, you could not have beaten this information out of me, you know, uh, before. So the marketing on your, your meth remediation business is uh, fairly straightforward. There's a, there's a few different avenues you can take. Um, and I'm just going to go over those. Some of these I've, um, you know, I've used most of these myself. The first one I'm going to suggest is not one I've ever done. And the reason for that is because, you know, I've always gotten enough business that I didn't really have to go hunting for more. And, you know, that's probably the first thing I'd be talking about. So let's, let's push the other one down a little bit. First thing you can do is provide customer service. That's the best marketing that you can do. You can understand, as I have talked about earlier in these segments, that um, the value of your customer is huge. And if you understand that your customer is worth more than just this one job and that he might be referring uh, other people to you because he likes the way you do business, then you go from having a uh, customer that might be worth, say, $4,000 to one might, that might potentially be worth six figures or more. So, you know, that's the best thing you can do. Now, as far as getting started is concerned, uh, one of the most obvious is you can go to um, places where flippers go. That's the county courthouse, for example and they have one in each of the different counties. You'll want to go to the uh, courthouses where you want to work. You go to the county courthouse where you are getting flippers that are bidding on properties, and you know and they know that they will be running into meth-contaminated properties. They've already run into a couple, and these are the guys that are gonna be most likely to find these. In addition, uh, you can get to know a couple of home inspectors. Now, home inspectors, uh, each of those guys are going to be running into, you know, if, they're, if they know what to look for, and I guess this can be a training program for home inspectors, you can go to the ASHI groups and the NACHI groups and whatever other groups there may be um, in whatever state that you're in. But look for those guys and train them on the, um, the four signs of how to spot a meth house. And um, I haven't included that in this because that, you know, the, the, the how to spot a meth house thing is not the same as how to decontaminate a meth property. You can take information like that to home inspectors and you can gain a great deal of credibility there. I'm going to say that uh, it's probably fair to say that on average, each home inspector will probably find one ish meth house per month. Uh, if he's looking routinely, if he's sampling and if he knows what to look for and he's recommending and, you know, all that sort of thing. I used to tell people that I found meth in about 5 to 10% of the properties that I do. And, you know, that's actually a huge number. If a, if a home inspector is doing 20 to 30 home inspections per month or you, maybe 40, and 10% of those, that's 4 meth properties per month. You know, that would have you so busy you couldn't even see straight. Um, so if you've got a couple of home inspectors feeding you, uh, you could do quite well there. Obviously you've got to develop those relationships and you're much better off, uh, actually putting your face in front of theirs, buying them lunch and teaching them rather than sending them postcards or emails or whatever. Those are just annoying and they get deleted. So buy them lunch and you've probably owned them for life. Me personally, as a home inspector, Nobody has ever offered to take me out to lunch. So I'm sure that you would have their attention if you said, look, I'd like a moment of your time. Let me you know, take you to some $5 meal somewhere. They'd, they'd, probably, they'd probably roll over on you for a free meal at McDonald's. 
Um, presentations to realtors as well and to brokers. You know, you can hand out your business cards, but uh, that's another way to do it. Realtors often run into meth contaminated properties and then they'll go asking who knows, you know, what happens next because a lot of those guys get deer in the headlights look to them because they don't know what to do. They've never heard of the problem happening. They just are totally out of their league. So you kind of become the hero to them for how to solve their problems. So realtors are another one. So thus far we have flippers, we've got home inspectors and realtors. And if you go to just those three groups, you should have um, you know, all the business that you need. But there's some other things that you're gonna need to be aware of. Uh, I mentioned customer service, but do a good job. The easiest way to get work is to pick up the phone where somebody called you and they say, I've got a meth problem, I know you're good. My friend, you know, Jane Johnson referred me to you. What do you charge? And then you've got the job. And it's so much easier that way when you do a good job. Now, I also can be a customer for you. Um, I will pick up meth jobs occasionally that, again, I don't want to do because I'm, you know, using my time elsewhere. So if you basically make me a raving fan, then you've got some work there too. And what I, of course, am looking for is I want to be able to hand the job to you, get money, and then never hear from it again. You know, I don't want to hear complaints. I don't want to hear questions. I don't want to have my phone ring and say, this guy isn't here. Where is he? You know, those are the things that piss me off and uh, make me wonder why I'm using a, a contractor like that. So if that's, you know, basically once you get a job, get it done, get it done well, get it done fast and communicate with your clients so that they're not trying to get a hold of me and find out where you are and why you're not getting the job done. Uh, move it. My, my bullet point on my spreadsheet is move it. And that's what it means, you know, go. You, you don't get to move slowly on these things. That ends up just doing badly for everybody. You do need a website. You've got to have something. Uh, nobody in any business anymore is legitimate if they don't have a website. It needs to not be terrible. It can be average. It doesn't have to sparkle. It doesn't have to be a billion dollars, but you do need to have a website and it needs to have some content on it. And if you're looking for content, you can actually, you know, borrow some ideas from mine. Again, mine is crossroadsengineers.com. And you can, uh, you can take some of that. For example, there is a, um, a calendar that kind of shows or a list that shows how long and why it takes so long to do a meth remediation. You can um, maybe even go over the uh, how to spot a meth house thing. You can provide links to the articles and videos that I do. As long as I know about it, you can actually even link to those same YouTube videos so that uh, you've got more content on your site and it's just right there ready for you and you don't even have to do much. So that all, all that sort of thing is available. Just let me know that you're doing it. Flipper groups. And, um, you know, this is different than actually flippers. If you want to reach flippers, you're going to go to the courthouse steps. If you want to reach flipper groups, you're probably going to go to Facebook uh, as the first place that I would check. Um, you know, you can do a very simple Facebook search and find groups that are passionate about flipping homes and, um, you get on there and you just comment that says, hey, you know, I, I do meth remediations in this area. And, you know, you can look for that sort of thing and set yourself up as, uh, as an expert or somebody they can go to or somebody they can refer people to, however, however that works. You might also want to look into, there's an MLM, which um, I am not a member of, so it's not like I'm trying to promote an MLM here. Uh, it's called Nouveau Riche, and the MLM concept is basically that person A wants to get into the flip business, so he is recruited by person B, and then he recruits person C, and they all go about flipping homes, and, and um, you know, this, this person A has a mentor and a mentee, and it, uh, you know, it becomes an MLM for flipping houses. And 
you know, you might want to look into that to see if you want to actually join that group. I don't know if they would let you just hang out, but you might be able to join the group just so that everybody knows that you're a meth remediator when the time comes. And, you know, you may or may not have to actually act like you're, you're flipping homes, but hey, if you've got uh, credentials and knowledge to flip a home, you might be that guy that goes looking for meth contaminated properties so that you can buy that house and flip it. Of course, you can make some money that way too. Great way to do business. Obviously, you've got a very unique capability. And if you can find the funds, then, you know, by all means, go for it. Then your, your return might go from maybe making $4,000 or whatever your number is per job to perhaps making, you know, 10 or 15 or whatever the number is. Now, be aware. I use the number 4,000 because in Utah, that's a fairly common remediation cost given Utah's rules. Now, if you go to Colorado, for example, the rules get a lot tighter and it's very common for remediation costs to be 10, sometimes even more, 12 up to $15,000 just because of the way the laws are written. Uh, you go to Nevada and you've, instead of zero point, or instead of 1.0, you got 0.1. Uh, Hawaii is different, of course, California is different. And then pretty much when you get past east of the Mississippi River, uh, as of the time I'm recording this, there really are no laws in those states about um, certification or how to do a meth remediation. So that's a totally different ball game there. Um, people are not required to remediate their homes based on law. Uh, you're going to just be wanting to remediate or to talk somebody into recognizing that meth contaminated properties isn't good and that you can solve that problem. In those states, you don't have the force of law behind you. And then another thing, so you got Nouveau Riche, you got Facebook, and then another thing you can do is you can talk to hard money lenders. And you can say, hey, you know, you the hard money lender, I know that you run into flippers that want to flip a myth contaminated home occasionally, I'm available, and here's why you want to use me, blah, 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 I'm certified by the home medic, I've been through his courses, you know, I'm certified by the state, and, you know, if, again, you put your face in front of his, and you're going to be the first guy that he is likely to call. Um, so, there, are, those are a number of options for marketing yourself, and Really, you've got, uh, I'm going to say, about half a dozen um, options that I've, that I've listed. If you do two or three of those well, you'll, you should be in very good shape as far as keeping yourself busy. And of course, you know, you can always, when you need more work, you can step up the marketing. And when you need less work, you can stop marketing. But you always want to provide great customer service. And uh, then it doesn't take too long before you can stop marketing at all. You've got people that are referring their friends, etc., to you, and you just take phone calls and do jobs. It's a great place to be, and uh, you'll appreciate that. Glad to have you on board. Um, if you have any questions after this training, contact me based on the email on my website. If you have any questions, look forward to hearing from you.